Hey, Hamilton. Jerry. How are you doing? Are you not hearing me? Yes. Excellent. I can hear you. Did not have my head. Did not have my headphones in. Oh, good. How are you? Um, pretty good, I think. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, the uh, the steward ownership thing with Jordan, I think, is going to move and maybe move quickly and maybe be really good for us, and that just feels good. Um, there's a lot of OGMiness in the air. There's yeah. sort of other movements and other things that are like doing, trying to do what we're just trying to do, only different. Mm -hmm. And they don't they don't overlap with us, but they're good. Hey, Pete. Morning. Pete. Um, so feeling good that way. Nice. Yeah. And partly this conversation owes the fact to our having talked many moons ago. I know. I know. And I feel I feel bad as a, I've missed like I've had bad timing the last couple Tuesdays because I feel disconnected from the arc of it. Matt and I have been oh. ships passing in the night talking about it. We will get you back caught up. Yes. Um, maybe while it's a little bit quiet, I can. Um, this is the current version of the dashboard. Cool. Um, the the items are these are all pretty good items, but there's probably a bunch missing at this point. I've went through different iterations, making it more complex and less complex. So this is where I am right now. And if you click on one, does it spill out people and stuff like that, or um, have you thinned out the data? This is actually just a reminder to add people. Okay. Um, I've had other ones that have people, you know. And there's actually nothing in status right now. I don't. Well, a little bit. Anyway, I, the next step might be working on this a little bit more and getting it to be usable by by folks who need to use it. Awesome. Which I think is very few people. You guys like my t-shirt? I got this for Christmas. This Sweet. Awesome. Oh, wow. And Hamilton. <laughs> oh my God. That's awesome. Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yeah. That's great. Love that. So Pete, what is, um, what's the epic, the, t the column that is? Um, thanks for asking. And I apologize for like, no, no, putting no. Putting on the table and whipping it away. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> um, I, I think, well, I think this tool is super important and we haven't had it for a long time and I've been working on it and working on it. And I guess, I don't know. I'm both excited and tired about, of it. Um, uh, Epic and, and department is actually in transition. Um, there was a iteration of this where these projects were actually more like, like sections of projects. So getting OGM on social media is actually, I mean, it's a, it's actually almost an Epic itself. Now that I think about it, Do you, does Epic ring a bell with, with Scrum or Agile or? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah. that was the intent of it. So the intent was kind of like, um, maybe there is, I, I would actually make this an Epic. Uh, OGM on social gotcha. media is an epic. And then underneath that, that would be like, you know, identifying channels, identifying internal people who want to work on it, um, creating a social media calendar, whatever, 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 right? So um, that was kind of the intent of the the original epic thing. And some of them are kind of still like that. Gotcha. I went through and deleted a few of these. Um, but, then, but then another way to think of it, I think maybe more productive um is these are departments of OGM and there's I think this is kind of in between a a pure corporate department thing which is another another a useful cut so um you know all organizations you can think of them they have marketing they have um sales they have you know internal operations they have you know that kind of stuff so literally, you could you could have corporate departments in here instead of the things that I have. Um, 
So Lionsburg is kind of a epic. Internal tools is kind of a department. So it's still morphing it over. And I love it. Flotilla and is an external department. <laughs> and this is part of the language we need to sort out, Pete, because you sent me a nice note about um, defining some of these things and figuring out what is flotilla and, and sort of reifying them. And for me, departments and epics are new language on top of language we're still discussing. Mm -hmm. So I, while I like them, they're confusing because I already had like five different nouns that that yeah. we're making we're making sense in my head yeah. um so I, th I think we should figure out what our objects are and which one is which kind of object i think that's important yeah and the, the way i would do that is by drawing them yeah <clears throat> this is you know this is a quest this is a guild the um Some of the stuff that I, I've actually I've been not getting back to, um, Tony has been falling off my stack and I need to connect with him better. But some of the stuff that Tony and I did made made the, the nouns of, of things like really crisp in my head. Crisper? Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah, because for me, like, for me, Free Jerry's Brain is a quest, but its members are the, are the beginning of a guild. But, it, but Free Jerry's Brain isn't a yeah. guild. The, the members of Free Jerry's Brain are probably the founding members of a, some kind of infrastructure guild, which we haven't really named yet. But that, but that would be like a, a guild of, you know, foundation pourers or whatever that might be. And, yep. me, and Mean Brain um, and whatever other bits of code get built within Free Jerry's Brain are projects, but not, they're not quests. They're individual projects of some sort. And we haven't got a special name for projects, but for me, that's a project. And if it becomes a piece of code we care about long term, maybe that has a different name than just a, a short term project. But to me, to me, this, the stuff we make needs a name as well, because it's an object, right? Because meme brain winds up being a thing, for example. Yeah, I, I think so talking through that kind of stuff, I, you know, I, I would, I, I have more or less the same vocabulary, I would tweak it a little bit. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, I, I created flotilla as a, as a using as a guild and as a, <clears throat> well, I created a guild and a, and a quest or a project and a community of practice. Um, so, so one of them is named flotilla project. And then the other one is named tools for connectors. And at some point on one of our calls, Vincent, who is very patient and very accommodating said, Oh my God, we have too many names. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, he's, he's got uh, too many name uh, um, PTSD from his family business because they made a whole bunch of little LLCs to kind of like partition the thing properly. Like they the were coffee uh, business. Yeah, a twenty million dollar company, or you know, hundred million dollar company, and and they're not quite that big yet, I don't think. Um, anyway, this this was from working with Tony, and there's um, there's a so these are almost the verbs of stuff, you know, and then the verbs kind of these these are actions, so they right. connect nouns. Mm -hmm. um, one of the really interesting things was um, this thing where I've got them all labeled quest, 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 quest. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, these, this is a, a cycle where internal to, um, to OGM, I think when we get going, uh, we'll be noticing a, a, a class of problems. Like we need to, um, uh, people keep talking about diagramming and visualization, you know, and, and it seems like there's some activity there and you can kind of coalesce that into, um, hey, you know, we could, you know, are there people interested in diagramming that whole uh, GameStop thing and how that worked, you know, and so then this is kind of spinning up a, a quest or a project or, or something mm -hmm. like that, Sim similar to, you know, meme brain, you know, free Jerry's brain, um, meme brain, um, you know. So what you just described there with all the quest tagged line items seem to me to be a template for action. Yes. Okay. But they're confusing to me as activity, uh, as, as on the activity dashboard, because altogether there, sh there might be one activity that says create a template for OGME action. Like how do we take action? And then all the items you just described would be sub 
subbed under that. Yeah, um, it's it's an artifact of of how Tony and I work through this. Um, okay. So all of these things, Tony, Tony and I, Tony was just basically kept asking questions. I think you guys do, you know, X, and I'm like, well, actually, we don't do X, but we do, you know, right. Z, Z, you know, A, B. Um, so, um, so one of the things is, well, I bet you guys, you know do this th stuff as this is like your main thing. And I'm like, well, actually, it turns out we, we don't do any of that right now. Um, but, you know, I can see how this group is going to be doing this. Yeah. So this is, you know, for better or for worse, where, where we got to this, this, this tool here tracks like generic activities that OGM might be involved in at, right. at whatever level. Um, uh, as you know this this is something that i've been wanting to draw out as a separate loop thing and it would be on a separate diagram than you know the kind of the mainline activities of of uh of ogm um hi lauren hi judy um pete is showing us the Airtable dashboard that he has been building uh for us to figure out where the hell we are and what we're doing which is awesome um, and the table you were just showing feels to me a little bit almost like a chart of accounts in quickbooks this in this, in, yeah, in the, in the sense of these are all meta activities we would do, but none of them are actually a named project, meaning yeah. outre outreach is a category of things. That's awesome. And we need to figure out how to do outreach. And then in outreach, uh, and then community building is, um, uh, is a thing we should do. And these are, you know, out onboarding new members is one of the aspects right. of community Am I building. Should I be on this one or the other one? Uh, the other one. Yeah, this one. So everything in column A, all the activities feel to me like, like, things that OGM does, but none of them are specifically a thing OGM is about to undertake, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so, Hey, we've decided we're going to map the GameStop uh, debacle <clears throat> would be a, would be a, a short-term activity that could turn into a quest. Maybe if it grows, yeah. it could just be like a little experiment. And maybe we, we maybe we need a name for prop, you know, a project and experiments or something like that. But then it becomes to me a task like item. So, so that's why I'm saying that what I'm looking at in this table feels like the chart of accounts where yep. in an accounting package, the chart of accounts is this is consulting, this is Patreon, this is something else. And yep. each one, each one is a line of a, the kind of activity the enterprise engages in. Yep. That uh, it, that's uh, well apprehended. Yes. Cool. That's exactly what it is. Okay. So then, so then once we start doing things, we could pick from, okay, now we're in the uh, determine initial problems you know, in the sense making aspect of uh, how we pick up and, and launch new projects, which sounds, yep. which sounds great to me. And then yep. we may want a tiny hierarchy of these things. Yes. And that may definitely. be its own, that may be its own little lookup table or something like that. So we can use that as a language for how we do things. That sounds yes. fine to me. The, um, there's a, there's uh, this, I, I don't know that I would, well, it turns out that this is actually a pretty good representation of things, and it's useful. I, I, this is not. It's it's barely a communication tool because it's it's fairly complicated, and it doesn't. Uh, th this is this should really be a set of diagrams, not an Airtable. Is where I'm going with that. Um, uh, you mean so, sort of like a flowchart of how we work? Yeah, different flowcharts and different cycles, uh -huh. like you know. Um, uh, it's super useful for me, and and I've been surprised with Airtable. Um, it it helps me do I I can do this kind of sense making into Airtable now and flesh out a bunch of stuff that that should be on a diagram, mm -hmm. and you know discover all kinds of really interesting um, you know attributes of kind of the way things are connected. But then this is really it's not even a power tool or it's it's not even really an assistive device. It's kind of like a background sketch. That you know, I, I guess uh, this is this is like they're, they're in, if you're making a complicated film, there must be massive sets of spreadsheets. You know, like these are all the locations. This is the way the different characters interact. You know, this is the costumes they're supposed to be wearing in each scene. Right. Well, this is um, if this were a movie we were making, then the line items in column A would be uh, you know recruit recruit uh, photography staff, recruit location scouts, recruit. Yeah, all the yeah. positions for making a movie and then you know uh book book equipment schlepping etc cetera, etc cetera. all all of that would pile into the kinds of activities yeah. and then if we decided to make shakespeare in love then it would then it would have people and and uh and actual places in it and it would it, yeah. would, it would suddenly be instantiated 
as a project plan for for humans to go do. Yeah. Yeah. I sure wish I'd worked on Shakespeare in Love. That's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Um, Lauren, Judy, hi, just, we don't want to just keep sort of talking. This is lovely. I just want to check in and see if you have any, and Lauren, you've been working on a lot of organizational stuff. Hey, Scott, um, just want to check in with you guys and see how you're doing on the steering front. Judy? <laughs> um, I'm not steering very well today. <laughs> oh, good. The tiller um, is like loose. Yeah, the tiller is loose. I'm just, um, I've been so busy with so many different things that I'm kind of contemplating limited staycations. Um, but, but I think that what we're doing is really important. And I love hearing what Pete's doing because he's always got so much new stuff that he's accomplished in the week in between. Um, I think what I'm pondering about is, is just this vast territory of continuum of what it is we're steering because we're going so many different directions and things are starting to move with various people. Um, so even keeping track of what's going on is a little bit challenging. Thank you. And, and I think um, my posted video was an attempt to do that. I think we need to do that and, and sort of reify it much more and talk it through and marry, marry that to the tables that Pete is just, just showing so that that becomes one story and one way to, to track these things. And then to take things like, here's Klaus, Here's Klaus's project. Here's how, here's how we name it. Here's how it fits. Here's how we can be helpful to it. Here's the secret sauce that OGM brings to Klaus's project because why else would he be here um, other than he likes the people? Uh, but but how, do, how does this all sort of click together into a, a thing that OGM does? And then the line items on the activities that Pete was just showing us are, are hopefully nice descriptions of the way we step through doing things, like e including even how do, we, how do we identify a new project and call it something, right? That, that's part of the middle of what, what Pete had there on, on screen. That sounds, good. that sounds good to me. I, I'm just, um, I'm grappling with starting to have a number of different interactions with individuals about things that we're interested in trying to do together and keeping track of to what extent we need to formalize that um, because it feels natural for it to be kind of informal initially until mm -hmm. it becomes something that where there's a contemplated work product <laughs> um, or an outcome or a framework or something of that order. Yeah. It, it feels like to me, there's a couple sort of little thresholds there as you start like, Hey, let's, let's make a movie. Right. Um, or let's put on a show, the, the Judy Garland and uh, Mickey Rooney kind of line. Um, there's a couple thresholds. One is, is it, is it OGME? Does this feel like a piece of the community? Because you could go float off and do something else and that'd be totally fine. And that's, you know, you, you using your time in a way you'd like to. So if it is OGME, do you want OGM to hear about it so that other parts of OGM will be alerted like, hey, there's an interesting thing. I should ask Judy if I can show up to their calls, for example. Right. In which case, then, how do you announce it? What do you call it? Where do you put it? Which is what we're trying to frame up here, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that—that's most of it. I mean, uh, and then one, and then once you've put it in the stream, then people know to they, people need to know where to look for things like that, and then show up. And then that's how we kind of staff and think through um, OGME things. And then, and then I think there's sort of an intimacy gradient of projects. There's some things that are just things that individuals are doing or, or like Scott's uh, intellectual framework, things that they've been working on for a really long time that are their projects that are, that, that in fact, they're working really hard to sort of exclude too much outside stuff so that they can frame it and deliver it as it's, as it's being birthed inside of them. Uh, and then there's, there's other kinds of projects, uh, whether it be, uh, uh, Kiko Labs educational projects or whatever else, where there's there's some really nice overlap of communities, but so far not that much overlap of pro projects and work. How do we how do we like turn that on so that Kiko Lab feels a really positive effect from being part of OGM as practice, not just as community? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. I have a question too, because as all of this evolves and becomes more elaborate. Do we sort of have a, like, I don't know, an OGM channel listing? Um, I have my own of the things that I now participate in, you know, put on as recurring meetings or other things like that. But as 
as we start to have subsets coming up, are we, do we contemplate or do we already have a channel listing that says that now we have, you know, peer guiding meeting at two o'clock on Tuesdays and so forth? Because um, I have a bunch of these on my calendar that I'm dealing with. Right. But as we grow, it's going to become an unmanageable petwa of, of information. And how would I know that there's other than Lauren telling me or Charles or Sot or somebody saying, hey, Judy, you might be interested in X. <laughs> right, right. Or tracking the various lists that we're, we're all on or the telegrams or the whatevers. Uh, so Vincent has been working on an air table with uh, event schedules. Yep. Uh, I'm not a calendar master because I tend to make mistakes using the actual calendars too often but I would love to figure out how to marry what Vincent is building with our calendars so that it all kind of works and we can go look at the big board and say, oh, here's where I'd like to go next. Um, yeah, that, that master calendar that he's working on is intriguing and the calendar sharing, I'm just not a Google calendar person. So that's well, a big- I think the, the calendar is, is partly that. I, I think the answer to Judy's question is probably more like you go to the homepage um, and you know, there's different sections, and under this one section, there's meetings, and another section, there's communication channels, or something like that. So there should be a, a few pages on the website that just tell you. Um, in, in, in an ideal world, what you're what you're asking about should look a little bit like an open space meeting, like like what we're doing is we're holding a protracted, you know, multi-month open space meeting, and you go to the board and see what's next. Uh, which session you want to go to next. Uh, and then some of those sessions are tagged as, hey, this is a recurring meeting that happens every Tuesday at two or whatever. And then you can note that and you can just sort of add that in. That would be that would be nice to nice to manage that way. And and I think for me, since there are there are certain themes coming up that are recurring, you know, where people have already expressed interest and others have said, yeah, I'm cool with that too. Uh, intergenerational learning would be one, um, you know, education, I don't like the word education, but relearning or whatever we're gonna create as a new word for um, positive changes to the opportunities of increasing one's knowledge. <laughs> um, I need a, a great one word for that sort of thing. Um, community engagement, um, I'm just throwing out categories, but just to get a sense of, would we have a map of some sort that would allow someone who wants to dive into a particular zone to do that? Or would they do that from the master list, Pete, as you envision in terms of the... I, I think that's, um, it's kind of interesting the categories you're talking about are a little bit bigger than the ones that, that I've been bumping into or running across. So I think where you would find that is on, uh, another thing that, that Vincent and I are working on are our directories. So project directories, guild directories, uh, people directories. So somewhere in the project directory, um, you'd, you'd have categories in there probably, but, but probably you wouldn't, you wouldn't find, what you would do is you'd see three projects or three guilds or something working on education. You wouldn't see education as the thing that you want to go glum onto. You'd go, Education would oh, be one this, of those meta tags. Yeah. This one about um, you know uh, reaching out to you know to disadvantaged youth in your own community. That's the one that I want. You know that things for me, and it's in the education category. And and it's also lovely. It's sort of a, a nice irony that in asking your question, Judy, you said like, well, shouldn't there be like a map of this? And we're all about like mapping these kinds of things. So yeah. we're busy trying to use Tinker Toys to build something that should be a lot smoother and better. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm just asking questions and I'm hardly yeah, awake, yeah. so that's okay. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. I mean, it's like, uh, we, we're carpenters who are busy trying to invent the ads. Um, well, it's, it's all about engaging people, you know, yes. how, do, how do, how do we connect? And I love our weekly OGM calls, but, and, and at the same time, I want to figure out where to dive in. Uh, totally agree. Um, and this is necessary. Um, and I, I wanna, so the Jordan Sukut Lionsburg steward ownership thing is moving relatively apace. And before I switch to that topic, Scott, what did you wanna jump in with? Um, <clears throat> yeah, related to what Judy said, my challenge lately has been if 
to jump in. And, and what I'm becoming increasingly aware of is my propensity to want to help. Contrasted with my available time. You need to get things done. Right. Um, yeah, I'm, for sure. my, my freelance work has, has ramped up significantly. But there's also this growing understanding that when I say yes to Lauren and then don't do it, that's a problem. It's a problem for me. It's a problem for her. And so I think it, it's just this growing feeling like I keep saying, oh, yeah, 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 let's do this. This will be great. And then, you know, I bump into reality and I realize I can't. I, I've got these other things going on. And when I have to weigh it out, it's like, okay, I have this paying thing that's in my face that I need to deliver. But I have this other thing that I want to do and to be helpful and reciprocal. And like, I can't. And then I feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. Because I've said, sure, yeah, yeah, I'll help you with that. And then I don't. And then I, my tendency is to just like, just pull away. Well, you pull back in order to not make commitments that are too hard to, or, um, you know, not, not going to get fulfilled. Yeah, but it feels like ghosting. Yeah. You know, I kind of broke up. I didn't even text you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just didn't, I just didn't appear anymore. And Project right? ghosting. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so that's, that's kind of, I mean, all these things are so cool that you're all working on. And, and yet at the same time, I'm realizing I can't do, I can't be part of them all. I can't do part of them all. And it hurts when I say, you know, you show up and, and I'm picturing the Zoom call and I'm thinking, well, there's only going to be five or six, seven people there. And if I'm not there, that's, that's like 20%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. so, so I have two different answers or comments to this and I'd love to know what other people think but but um, one one comment is just the obvious one about we all need to figure out time management I'm terrible at it I have too many oars in the water one, that's one of my major issues and so so you just pointed like at the heart of like one of the things I need to conquer that I may never manage to conquer in my life but I try really hard the other thing actually takes me back into work the the, the side path the sidetrack that I was going to take us down with Jordan, which is I had a very nice call with Jordan yesterday. And at the end of it, he's like, so what's top of mind for you right now? And I'm like, well, there's, there's our project together to frame up OGM and put a structure around it, blah, blah. And then I'm trying to drum up business because I, my revenues for the last couple of years has sucked. I don't have growing individual sort of stuff going on and I need speeches and I need, you know, whatever else it is or inside Jerry's brain sessions or whatnot. And he, he sort of, he very, very nicely sort of, pulled me up and said, so as we move forward and start doing stuff together, and this is part, I think, of our conversation on Thursday to try to start figuring these things out. But as we move together, if somebody's going to work with you, they need to know that kind of you're all in with them on stuff. And they need to understand that you're not working on your own behalf only because of this sort of thing over here. Or if you are, that that's clear and they understand where that boundary lies. And for me, I'd like I'd like to figure out a way because uh, you know at the end of the conversation I'm like, damn it, he's completely a thousand percent right. I need to figure out how to make sure that all my efforts are OGM efforts, and that if I get remunerated, a word that came up in our Monday call several times, we had trouble saying it over and over again. Um, uh, if I get paid for doing some work on a project, that it's an OGM project, and that there were there were slices of, of revenue going through the whole OGM ecosystem, as opposed to just expediently doing side stuff for me because that gets confusing for other people trying to work with me. And that was that was really interesting to me. And it was like, oh, okay, I need to sort of think of myself as all in. And that was really complicated for me because I need to very expediently and very quickly make some money on, on you know, doing stuff. And then that's, and th this, this now becomes, <laughs> this now becomes a lovely barrier in my way to doing that because the, the, the level of complexity for approaching somebody and doing something just bounced up, mm -hmm. right? So I think that, the faster we get some structure around OGM and we can say, there's a nonprofit, there's a for-profit, here's how they work. And this is what a project is. This is what a quest is. This is what a guild does. This is how they fit. This is what a member is and how they, you know, what, what members do. And then, and have 
affordances like the directories and the air tables that Pete and Vincent are building and, and, and other sorts of visualizations of this flow so that people can understand what to, you know, how the parts move, the sooner we will be in a place where Klaus can not only be a, 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 an enthusiastic participant here and, and Lauren and Charles with their educational initiatives, but they can also point to, and this is how we fit in OGM and this is how OGM has helped us and this is how we're all building assets together and where those assets are going to go. And all those moving parts wind up being things we can actually uh, you know, talk about and point to and, and show in different places. And, you know, and here's our GitHub repository. This is where we put all the open source code that we've developed as part of our multiple quests and efforts. And it has a, it has a place and you can go leaf through it or it has a tag. Maybe it's not in the same GitHub repo, but it's actually tagged in, in the same way with OGM something, something, something. Uh, but but I'm, I can easily envision all those things. So I'm eager to step us into the structure if it's the right structure. So the conversations we need to have about the steward ownership model in Lionsburg is, is this the right thing? Are these the right people? Because there are multiple organizational schemes that, that groups like us are finding and fitting into. And I, I met several of you, including Lauren through Dig Life, uh, and we had long conversations there about multi-stakeholder multi cooperatives. Turns out if you want to be a multi-stakeholder cooperative, good luck to you because there aren't enough states that know how to do that. The process isn't really well known. You are a pioneer out in the field. So we ended up creating a, uh, um, what was it? I've forgotten which, which uh, model it was called. It was a, work, it was a version of a worker-owned co-op, but I don't, I don't know exactly what. But that sort of got, got created along the way. And then our efforts kind of petered out um, right about at the point where these things started to, to get reified and get, you know, turn into sort of real things. Go ahead, Pete. And I get, need to get my power plug there. My, my guess is um, that the whole, you know, structure and ownership thing is, is huge and complicated. Um, but having done it for a long time, um, in <clears throat> entrepreneurial settings, the I, th I think this is where where I start to think about small groups of federated organizations or groups of small federated organizations rather than a big organization, right? So when when you start to say ownership um, instead of commons, <clears throat> I you don't want I, the, the more people you have co-owning something, the, the harder and harder it gets to manage. <clears throat> so I think really what you want is five or six people, you know, in a, in a very tightly constrained kind of thing where they all trust each other, very high trust, um, uh, a lot of <clears throat> co-interest, you know, when things change and they need to change with it. Um, so, um, so when I think of, so it's interesting thinking when I when I've heard you t and you talking about Jordan talking about steward ownership, it's like, oh, well, we'll all have a share of OGM. And it's like, yeah, actually, when I'm thinking operationally, it's more like there's probably 20, you know, littler clusters um, where, you know, that's where the ownership ends up, ownership in a thing ends up being. Um, and I think those would overlap. You know, so there's the Pete and Vincent and and Bill, you know, cluster that you know does one kind of thing and and maybe owns some IP or or owns you know some I I don't know I guess revenue stream or something like that. Um, and then there's also you know Vincent and and um, I don't know who else uh, uh, Vincent and a few other people you know overlaps with. He's he's in other organizations, so it's it's kind of funny now that I'm thinking about it, using Vincent as a, a pivot uh, point in the example because he was the guy who's like, dang, I got too, too many, many things. Notes. Too many notes. But um, but I I think I think one of the one of the you know in reflecting it, kind of my watching and participating in organizations coming together like this, it's like. Well, what we want to be is one big organization that you know co-owns everything, and we all have shares and blah blah. blah. And it's just like it gets too big. You, you really have to cut it up into smaller pieces, and then those pieces have agreements with each other to get things done, to you know, to share things and, and that like that. So I think we may be closer than you think. So in what I've said, I don't think I've ever uttered this a sentence like, "We'll all have a share of OGM." 
that's Probably you. Not. That, that's something you're assuming, and yeah. I don't think I've said. Yeah. Um, and one of the one of the reasons that Jordan is really big on steward ownership is he says when you have a normal shareholder company and everybody divides up shares and you bring in a new partner, you have to figure out who gets diluted, and and, and like like and then when there's a divorce, shit hits fan and everything breaks. And he says this structure avoids all of that. So it will have his roles. It will have the ownership winds up being in the commons. And there's a big mental shift, which is we're all working together to foster better commons while we're making a living doing so. And there need to be some light filters for which orgs are completely trustworthy in this and are all in on the working principles that are shared by this constellation. And they can have their own ownership and they can like, I think I agree highly with the idea of autonomous, whether it's just a working team that doesn't have a DBA, that is just a bunch of people who love working together, who wanna go from project to project, fantastic, um, or whatever. Um, or um, CSC, uh, and then what kind of company is CNC, and how does it how does it adhere or connect to um, an OGM kind of platform? Pardon? Uh, a doing business as a, a, a fictitious business name. Yeah. Um, and, and are you a registered entity with in, in what in what municipality are you like homed, et cetera, et cetera? Like, are you a, are you a business, and do you, do you pay a little bit of business taxes? That that's a that's a threshold for. Uh, a kind of organizational uh, structure or capacity. Um, and so I'm interested in this being a constellation or a star nursery of projects, companies, other sorts of things that are busy forming and doing the kinds of interactions I think that, Pete, that you just described without the complexities of, oh God, who owns shares and what do we have now? And with the benefits of, oh, because we're in this, this constellation and not that one, which is run by intellectual ventures, which is also known as intellectual vultures, um, we're not busy sucking up the, the commons and locking away intellectual property and trying to maximize, like our ethos is this other ethos over here, which we can point to. And if you don't adhere to that ethos, that's probably a filter for us not wanting to do very much with you. And also, an, and also a filter for whether or not you'll be attracted to this particular constellation, not that one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think, I think we're not that far away and that's yeah. one of the reasons why I really like where Jordan is steering us. And I think he's seeing, I mean, I think, and I'm speaking for him here, but I think he's seeing that we're trying to model the way that most companies and organizations and nonprofits ought to be working together in the future. That instead of for-profit, fully for-profit consumer capitalist corporation, S-corps that are busy trying to fight their greedy battle against other ones, owning intellectual property, da, 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 we're actually going to have profitable enterprises on top of uh, an environment that allows them to nurture the commons and yet make a great living together. Does that make sense? Um, Lauren, go ahead. And I, I, Scott, I'm just going to read your note now. Go ahead. I just want to say, Charles and I got a mentor from Colonel, who's a um, crypto-related IP guy. And I also have another guy I met through um, my alumni association um, who's an IP um, lawyer at Scadden. So if there are specific questions, um, I'd be happy to direct those. Thank you. And I think when, when we get to IP issues, we'll, we'll need to find some sort of commons IP people. And I think in our crowds, I think Pete and I specifically, or particularly know a, a bunch of smart people who've been doing that kind of work as well um, and, and care very deeply about, uh, about how these things work. So I, I have to I have to jump in here mm -hmm. because my my comment here felt like a dissent to Which me. Which one? Your your comment in the yeah my, my yeah my my chat okay so I'm I'm a, you know I'm just realizing that I I just think you are the coolest most interesting people to talk to and this means in a group collectively so Thursdays hearing what everybody's up to, I think it's awesome. And then one-on-one, -on -one, every single one of my experiences, I haven't had a lot, but they've all been just like more. I want more of that, that's that's great. And, and this steering committee has been talking about the structure and the organization of this and how do we, how do we federate and make this into something that has a form and, and can, can get things done in the world. And I, have been feeling like I, I don't know if I'm 
I don't know if I'm steering. I think I'm in the back seat, kind of like looking out the window and enjoying in the view. Um, and I thought that that comment would 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 maybe put some distance between what you're trying to do and what I was feeling. And I've and there's three people who jumped in and said, "Yeah, I'm sounds feeling great. this too." What you wrote was sounds awesome. It doesn't sound like a dissent at all to me. Well, and mm. and so that's where I'm like. You know, I, I every time the the steering committee comes up, I think, why am I here? I've done no, I, I've done none of these things, you know. And I I just look at this and I think, I'm just I'm just having fun here. I'm enjoying this ride. If I can help anybody, because I have time, I will. But you know, I I'm just so anyway. I'm just really surprised that that a number of you are also feeling the same thing. I can comment because Please. I. Think my sense is not that I'm trying to steer a ship or that I'm trying to organize it in some particular way. I'm just wanting to affirm who I think we are and how we live and, and how we want to work with people. And I'm interested in what structures we can create by, by we, I, I probably mostly mean Pete because he seems to be right at the center of trying to lend order to this lovely chaos that we all enjoy. Um, but I think being able to have the ability to use systems to enable the expansion of this sense of joy and creating good things and enjoying good people and making the world a better place is important to do. So I don't see myself as doing a lot of steering in the sense of up in the motorhouse, turn left, turn right. Um, it's more an appreciation of the magnitude of what we're trying to do and how to make it somewhat manageable. Hey, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah. Um, th thanks for saying what you, you said, Scott, and it makes sense. I, I think that, so for me, it's kind of a continuum, right? It's like, I like to hang out with these people. Um, and I get distracted because I have to do work that pulls me away from these people. So, what I'm, where I'm going, what I'm, what my thinking process is, is I like hanging out with these people. I would love to work with these people. You know, I would love to, when I get a client, I would love to share the work here. Um, and I would love to, it sounds like they do cool stuff. And when they get work, I would love to help them work on it. Right. So I feel like it's a continuum and a, you know, an evolution of, of working together and, and, especially agreeing on a way that that the world should work and that people should work together and you know helping teach that to the rest of the world yeah uh, hamilton did you want to jump in yeah and um i mean i agree with it's interesting scott and i, and I also appreciate you saying that um like it, it feels like there's two things that have emerged from all these ogm conversations um and what's emerged on for Thursday for me is like, it's a salon. It's like, I've always wanted to be a member of a salon. So I'm really grateful for that. Maybe I don't really understand what really happened in the salons. But um, so I'm just grateful for that. The great brand, I mean, just hearing and, and, and talking about where there's opportunity to do better and how people are doing it, just meeting all of you is like that full stop has been a value that I would love and would continue to love. Um, and then, you know, the other thing Judy, what you're characterizing is is this trying to mobilize a collective effort to change the world with this um, is super interesting to me. But it's that's it's so enormous that task, and the and the group of people are so diverse. It's like hard to understand what a minimum viable product would even be to to get us off the dock. And I think that's where we keep coming back to. And Jerry, what you were just talking about too is little things, right? Little orglets, little things that make money, just so we can just move this huge conceptual thing into some things that are real, whether it's money making or charitable or, you know, more philanthropic or for commons. And so that's where I feel like these two where I when I come to these Tuesday meetings and I haven't been doing it a lot because my time has been so limited is what is a minimum viable product? Is it a story threading gig, Jerry? Right. Is it some way of bringing your brain into and, I was and, hoping some of those things would materialize and we, that would give us something like we could sink our teeth into and it would give us the, the beginning of a spine and some skeleton. Yes. Yeah. And, and Pete, I'm really interested in, and I know you've shared it before of like, you said you've had experience of seeing these types of things emerge of just continuing to, to tap into the different models that are out there. Right. I know we've talked about it, but because this is really, really hard. I mean, we, we are a 
group of friends who do not have a boss. We do not have a P&L. Um, you know, we're in different time zones and, and different clients. And so it's really hard to mobilize and organize and get, and get stuff done. And Pete, that's where, you know, your idea of like five people fully committed and bought in, I think is, is in, I don't know, want to say it's, it's a must have, but I could certainly see how that type of structure would certainly help move decisions forward, move progress, you know, and some of the doing of things and making of things. So Scott, then me. So my Pete, I'm, I'm with you. And, and, and the, the thing that jumped out at me that you said was, I love being here with all these people. Yes, I agree with that. And then I have to go, I'm distracted by the work I have to do. And I'm, and it just like, it hit me. That's the problem is that that's actually the work I'm supposed to be doing if I want to stay fed and all, you know, and, and yet, because this is so attractive, that feels like the distraction. And what I, what you, what you've crystallized for me is I got to the point where I was here Thursday, Metacogs, Kiko Lab, and individual conversations. And when the work would pop up, I get annoyed. Like, damn it, I don't want to, I don't want to have this this freelance thing that's going to take me all day because then I can't be on the call. And then, but and, and so what subconsciously I pulled away because then you guys weren't there and I didn't feel as bad, you know, because it was like, okay, well, you were, you're there, but you're, you're busy doing your own thing. And now I'm not, I'm focused. Well, all in Jerry, you said something about all in. And I had heard this in the context of a marriage, which I thought was really interesting. If you're not all in, you're not married. And I thought it's, it's like, wow, that's that's it's really true you can't you can't straddle that you have to you have to be in and but anyway that that was kind of an aside so the big deal for me is that what's the distraction and and i'm trying to discern that for myself what if the freelance work and ogm were the same thing i see that what i don't see is the bridge and and cool. going going over that bridge yeah. It's like I have to let go of the other one, you know, and, and that's kind of and so so honestly, part of my pulling away is hoping that I can continue making something that will maybe allow me to go take that bridge. And and the other thing is to let like, OK, you guys will figure that out. And then when, then when I reengage, which I feel horrible about. Right. <laughs> Don't feel horrible about that. And like, oh, seriously, I reengage like, oh, you've got this figured out and Pete's yeah. built this new thing. So, so a couple things. Uh, one, Scott, the, the heartful way in which you are here with us, like now and always, just warms my heart. I'm just thrilled, thrilled that you're here, that you love being with us, that you are generously contributing of your ideas and time and all that. Like I, I'm like over the moon. Um, there's I put in legitimate peripheral participation, which is a way too many syllables expression that comes out of the communities of practice work that ATN Wenger and Jean Lave did years ago. But it's a really nice term because it says in a community of practice, there's a bunch of people who are at the periphery and they're not jumping in. And that's great. They perform an incredibly useful uh, sort of role in the community because every now and then something lights up in the community that, that sparks them and they jump into the middle and take a turn that everybody then hears from and learns from and benefits from. And kind of that's what we have just on the OGM mailing list and the, our, our very our slightly too many art, you know, artifacts are ways of creating that flow, that flood of what's everybody working on? What do we care about? How do we wrestle through this? Okay, let's try to sort things out. And then, and then we're busy trying to build scaffolding so we figure out, okay, if this is an organization, what does that even mean? And I'm really reticent to make it a traditional organization, which would mean an exit strategy, Silicon Valley, you know, S Corp or whatever. It's like, I don't want that. I've seen those fail. I've seen those crash and burn way too often. Um, uh, so has Pete, so have, so have probably most of you. And so I'm busy do, trying to hold back the, 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 the structure in some sense so that we can work our way into something that sounds like it could be a place where we can each bring our work as long as it's resonant with the general thing that we that we think OGM is or where it's heading. And then there would there would be and should be other 
constellations called uh, game B, called whatever, which are busy with their own structures and their own ethos and their own principles. And, and the, the law of attraction, and I don't mean here the, the crystals sort of, sort of thing, I just mean that the law of two feet is probably the better way of putting it, which is one of the sort of precepts of, of open space uh, meetings. People going toward where their genius and their life energy is best used. And if we can make a living while doing that, bingo, we've likely struck the trifecta because then we're in a community we love, doing work we love, and, and it's all kind of aligned in ways that really work. And, and so that's kind of where I'm trying to aim. And as I, as I hear and smell pieces that's, that feel like they're going to get us there, uh, like Jordan's Lion's Bird Venture, I'm like that. Okay, how do I get us in that tractor beam? How do I make us a piece of that thing so that we become that kind of entity so that we can have those kinds of interactions? And none of this is adequately spelled out, explained. All of our artifacts are still kind of squishy and it's like jello being nailed to the tree right now. Uh, so we need to get there more. But I think where we're, where we're heading is, is that. And it feels like we're not steering right now because right now, like I put in the chat, it's, we're more like a river raft where everybody's oars in the water matter. But it's okay that we have a bunch of people in the middle of the raft, not steering, not pulling. That's fine because for some weird reason, our raft is like pretty floaty and we're going to be okay. We don't have holes in the raft because we're volunteering our time here. Like if we were, if we were all drawing salaries and we had no business coming in, there'd be like big tears in the raft. But since our raft is really like flimsy and lightweight, we don't have that. What we have is this nice structure that can float down the river and we're busy trying to figure out what is it, how does it work? Well, part of what I think is happening though is that everybody who's in the raft or hanging onto the ropes on the side of the raft or whatever the metaphor mm -hmm. might be, um, I'm just taking this to all the other groups I work with in a conceptual sort of way and saying, you know, I've been learning how to do this cool stuff using collective tools to communicate and frame context. And all these groups are virtual right now, you know, the, whether it's the international uh, focus and, and policy level stuff of the committee that I mentioned I was on with ACS that's really enlivened by the fact that now there's an opportunity for science in the US um, and they interface with the White House OSTP and stuff like that. But they're not using any good tools. You know, they, they did a Zoom meeting and I'm like, are you saving the chat to distribute? And they said, that's a good idea. And I'm like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> so there's a there's a there's an enablement that our energy can help with. And I think in some ways that's the minimum viable product. It's not commercialized yet, but I think it could be as a packet. You know, here's a way to enable a collective group of people working on whatever it is you're working on <laughs> to do a better job of keeping track of what you're doing because people are at such highly variable skill levels. You know, they're way worse than I was three and a half years ago when I started learning from you guys, you know? In including pieces like how to learn and what's out there to learn, like, like the, the education pieces and the learning pieces that we've got in the mix here are really, really important because they're a part of how people flow in here and start to ladder up because they're like, oh, I would like to join that thing, but they need these kinds of skills. And a piece of this is just the matching of where your skills are today, what you would like to do in the future and how that fits what's in the flow, right? And then you find your way to uh, the different kinds of projects that you can, that you can work on. Um, and, and I'm excited because I think that if we do this right, and, and Jordan's holding a really large vision of transforming all of society by modeling a platform that works better for people and for the commons mm -hmm. and, for, and for community at large, because I think he and I share the assumption that the current flavor of capitalism that has eaten our world isn't that good for our world, Yeah. right? And I think that there's a common critique. There's a whole mess of people I can point to and I collect them all in my brain uh, who think that that's a problem. And so th this is one set of solutions to that set of problems. And it feels like a pretty viable thing to me, although it's not a tangible thing to me quite yet, which is why I'm really excited about the conversations coming up. And I wanna say before we all have to bounce here that we're currently planning a, a, a call for Thursday after the OGM call. I, I put that on the Mattermost, uh, but Thursday after the OGM call to have a, a, a basically a facilitated uh, call to start this conversation about what these things look like. So I'm hoping that you can uh, participate. Go ahead, Lauren. Um, 
I just wanted to say I'm planning on uh, making a move to um, bring in uh, uh, a few people closer, basically who who I attract um, with my idea. But um, you know, I talked to Judy about this last night um, to make a small group that kind of shamelessly promotes each other um, because I think that we are all. Um, we all find it very hard. I think it's like, um, we're just the kind of people who are not shameless self promoters. And we have, we all have amazing contacts, but it is hard for us to tap into those like deep connections because it's hard for us to, you know, do that for ourselves. And so I, I, th I it's just my theory from looking around and trying to figure out what uh, we need um, I think a group like this, where I'm going to try to figure out how to gamify what incentives I think uh, we need. And then to basically what I'm trying to do is to create a power structure that is that you can see it and that there are very um, clear instructions on how to get power and those reflect the values that we have. And then it's um, it's visible then. This is how you get power. This is who has power. And this, this is what power consists of. This is what abilities that it gives you. And what I came up with, Jerry, was kind of based on what our conversation on the dojo, and you explain the structure of the person at the bottom who does the crap work of like sweeping and taking care of everyone. And they end up kind of getting the most power um, and so it's, it's based on that idea, which is that, um, whoever like does the most promotion of other people gets to kind of direct the swarm so that the, the lowliest, like most gracious person who's always promoting other people advances the quickest. And that's, that's my idea. <laughs> muted. I was muted. Sorry. I may be misappropriating the term, but uh, a couple of years ago, there was this notion of thunderclaps where you get a crowd of people together and you all kind of sync your social media accounts. And mm -hmm. then you drop messages into that and everybody like retweets and everybody posts and comments and everybody likes. And what you get is like a, a vastly amplified way of doing it. So if you look at thunderclap social media, I just posted the one thing that showed up when I Googled it uh, there that might, that might help you structure what you're doing. Great, yes. I'll give you some ideas. Go ahead, Judy. Well, I'm just, what I'm fascinated by is, is the sort of the dichotomy of thinking about ourselves as a profit making enterprise in some, one sense, because we want to be self sustaining and thinking about us as, you know, open global mind OGME is just share what we have to make the world a better place. And there's, there are threads in between, but what I'm finding a, an opportunity to do is to just introduce every group I work with to OGM practices and teach them to the extent I can and say, well, if you want to learn more, I know some people who can do this more effectively than I can, but I think our meetings would be more effective. I think we'd get more done. I think we'd decide what it is that we want to work on first and we'd work on it together and so forth. And I think that's a to use my old overused word, that's a dendritic approach to just getting it out there and not particularly worrying about the monetizing because I think what we're doing per se would be hard to monetize. But I think the facilitators who help people do it, that's a known, a known social structure of value. And so it's kind of as somebody coined the frame, you know, that we're a collaboration of consultants. Um, and I think that's kind of the role, you know, if you want help, come to us if you think it's valuable pay us <laughs> um, but we want these things to happen and then we should be happy if people emulate it and perpetuate it so a couple thoughts off that um i i think i told this story recently to pete or something in a, in a, in a meeting i don't remember where i said it said this recently but i know i've, I've told the story but in grad school my second year i had a great household in west philly <clears throat> and one of us had lived in a great household at the university of york in canada and he brought with him some house rules that we adopted immediately wholesale and they worked 
fantastically. And they were very different from everybody needs to mark their food with a marker. And, you know, this is your <laughs> shelf and this is my shelf. And that's how we divide up the fridge. And they were, we had very different working rules from the usual how you split up a multi-person household. And they were great. And I was like, okay, good. So partly what I'm trying to think of is the things that you're propagating are things you're seeing in other places like OGM. We need to make them more shareable. We need to make those stories very portable. So you can say, hey, I think that if we did the Philly household thing and here's a video explaining what those rules were, boom, somebody else picks it up. They, ad they adapt and appropriate it to their circumstances. They make it theirs, which is really important in the whole process. Lather, rinse, repeat worldwide. And then... And then to add to that, this back to the conversation with Jordan, I think that one of the big shifts that's possible right now is moving from uh, sort of profit making and uh, profit maximization. Uh, it's, it's got a name, profit uh, regency. No, it's, it's in my brain. Um, a primacy, I think it's something like shareholder primacy, I think is the, the one of the overall umbrellas here. Moving from a regime where companies need to suck dry everything they touch or they will be sued into a regime where you can make profits while improving your commons. I think that's one of the big societal shifts that I'm hoping I wanna spend my life energy making happen. Shareholder primacy, thank you. Um, I want to make this thing happen. And I think that that's a piece of what Jordan wants to make happen, which is why I feel like a real ally uh, in Jordan. And I think that most of us would love to do that, even if some of us, as you just articulated, find it hard to envision, hey, wait a minute, we're all about feeding the commons, right? Why should we be making a profit here? Well, the profit, I think, may, think of it as making a living. And the word profit gets a little colored in here because we tend to think of profit as profit maximization, where to profit from our work maybe has a slightly different sense to it, I'm thinking, which means benefit and well being, not absorption of all the value that's in the space. Because if we can focus on creating the shared value and putting it in the world and still figuring out how to make a living. So if somebody has a great idea, like Scott's mental models, you know, how does Scott make a living from this model that he's, that he's crafted for a really long time? How does he make a living from it? And how can we figure out to maximize the public availability of that tool? How, how, how does that thing live in the commons in some way? And he still uh, has a very comfortable living off it. That's, I think, a really, really important and intriguing question for the future of the world. Because in my experience, education, for example, is crippled because books are really expensive and information seems to be locked inside of extremely expensive books. Website, edutech websites, the moment you stop paying them their monthly fee, whatever you've done goes away. Seriously, all of this stuff is ridiculous. It's really ludicrous, but we take it for granted because profit motive? But, but, but we're busy like kidnapping ideas from the public sphere, which need to be propagated, elaborated, appropriated, adapted, and reused and, and improved. Sorry, Scott, go ahead. Oh, no, no. That's... Oh, I thought you'd raise your hand. I did. I did. No, that's that's great. You don't have to, don't have to apologize. Jeez. Um, so two things from that. First one was um, I find Lauren's idea really interesting about trying to the, the thunderclap or the variation of that. You know, um, my concern is that how many of us are ready for everyone to know about what we have, because if what my, my and then what question that I am always asking myself is, okay, I'm gonna tell somebody this is awesome. And the first thing you're gonna say is, okay, cool, send it to me. And I'm gonna say, uh, well, it's not, it's not ready yet. I can't, like, I, I don't actually have it to send to you. So I get concerned about wanting to spread ideas that aren't necessarily ready for prime time, or maybe that's part of the spreading is, this is somebody who's working on something really interesting and it'd be, it'd be nice to work with them. Second thing is I, I talked with a Cornell professor this week about my program and his, the number one thing that came out of it was he asked me, are you making a, uh, a something that's fundamentally universal or are you making an educational product? And I was like, oh, it's kind of both. <laughs> it's kind of both. How do I reconcile this? And what we ended up with because I've been looking at card decks and I think card decks are really interesting. And this will, this will come home in a minute here based on what Judy's, Judy's comment was. So I've got all these like decks of cards. I went through my library 
I've got nine decks of cards from various companies. And I'm like, you know what, deck would be perfect. And what we realized is that my structure is the universal, the high level. The bits and pieces, the 75 thinking skills are the educational model and the framework that you build yourself. And this is where it comes home to what Jerry, you were saying about Judy. The idea that, what Judy was saying is the idea that if you give someone a framework, locked, loaded, built, it's not their framework. And you have to work really, really hard to teach them like the whole thing. Say, okay, this is design thinking and here's all the steps and all the things that come with it. The idea here is how simple can you make the structure and then how flexible can you make the content in order to, so someone can say, oh, these are the parts that resonate with me. And then they build it into your structure. And, and that's, that's just something that has clicked into place for me. And I think it kind of fits as we talk about how to take this to the world like Judy is trying to do, is how do you make those, those Lego pieces so Judy, you said something, you, you, you had a conversation, that was a Lego piece that could potentially be used by someone else to say in, in a different situation, so. Uh, Pete, go ahead. I feel bad because I'm not gonna respond to what Scott said, I'm going to fork something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's a lot on the I, table here, so. During during this call, I've I've had this little twinge, um, Jerry. Every time you you, you talk about commons, um, and I think I I might have figured it out, kind of. Um, so, without detracting from what you said, I agree with what you said. Um, I wanted to take a different view at it, and I think maybe it's because I have been uh, fortunate enough for the past fifteen years or something uh, like that to be working in the software software world where um, there's a rich and robust commons at this point. Um, uh, so for me, I think there's I, the, the people I work with, and, and actually this happens all the time now in my life, um, when I'm working with people and talking about, let's build some software together. Um, one of the first things is like, and is it okay if we just dump, you know, as much as we can into the into the open, right? Because I'm I'm pulling from the commons, I'm putting back the commons. It's 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 not even um, putting software back into the commons actually makes it better. You know, it's not like you're giving up something and putting it. You know, like oh, I guess I can't. You know, it because every time somebody touches it, they, they're going to improve it in some way. And then you can pull some of those improvements back into what you're it's doing. It's not like the old Chevrolet on bricks in your front yard. That's not yeah. it. Um, so, so anyway, for me, commons is like an important, really important background kind of consideration. But where I, where I feel like I, where I feel like we should, <laughs> which is really just what I should feel like, I guess. But, um, but, I think the important thing, so commons is like is like background cosmic radiation. It's it's like you've got to have it, right? Um, but once you've kind of gotten to that point, then you can go, okay. The important thing to think about is value exchange, right? And instead of maximizing profit, it's like, um, and and I'm not trying to profit off of somebody else working with somebody else. What we're doing is exchanging value, you know, um, maybe and and then value the other thing that we we have kind of for better or for worse we've we've constrained value down to like it's just how many dollars right and it's like actually the value is, is very multivariate and you know and contextual and things like that the uh, the different kinds of value streams that that two parties might entertain are you know um maybe it's completely bartering you know if i do this work you'll do that work or um, and then, you know, we'll both benefit. Um, so kind of that mutual benefit of value and then thinking of value as many multiple streams. You know, maybe it's that I get um, a basket of food on my porch, you know, uh, each week or something like that. And that's, you know, something where we could shortcut money out of the equation and I'm still getting, you know, value that's super important to me. Um, I think the, the, the other thing that capitalism has done very efficiently is is move it 
it does this thing where it says value is only dollars and then it does another thing where it's like um, we're going to count certain things but the rest of it is externalities that we push off to other you know other players in the in the world right um, so I'm going to pollute because it makes me money and I don't care that other people are dying because of it or sick and dying because of it. Um, so recognizing lots of different kinds of value, recognizing that value happens in different ways between different parties and then accounting for positive value and for negative value. I think all of that kind of value uh, recognition, value exchange, I feel like that's actually the important thing. And the commons is almost a positive externality of people working together to do things smart, smart ways that benefit everybody rather than, you know, benefiting one one person sitting on a pile of gold. I'm so happy you have twinges. <laughs> um, because you've just articulated and elaborated things that I've been like floating in the fog on this at my periphery and I wasn't sort of paying enough attention to, but you're totally right. I mean, it's the, the commons is a, is a byproduct of healthy interactions and figuring out how the, how the interactions interact, uh, which can be articulated as exchanges of value or co-creation of value, maybe yeah. less than exchanges Even better. Uh, is super important. And I just put a video of Arthur Brock years ago talking about Bessie, his favorite cow and the different layers of value in Bessie. Just to just to sort of play out what this the sort of kind of articulation of value kind of means, and one of my big beefs with the kind of capitalism we're trapped in right now is that it compacts all these kinds of value into money, and it, it monetizes everything it touches, like Ice Nine, uh, in Cat's Cradle, and in doing so, it breaks a whole lot of systems, and it undervalues a whole lot of things that are actually extremely valuable because they add to our well-being and add to the value that we can co-create. So I'm completely on board with what you said, Pete. Um, and would like it to be incorporated in some way in our working principles, in our notions of how we do what we do together and all of that. And I then need to figure out how to insert that in my script in my head about feeding the commons and what does this mean, right? Um, and, and, and the place I usually use commons a lot is I say, we used to know how to live in the community on the commons. And, and that dynamic, the two circles I draw with my hand when I make that statement are the exchanges of value that you're talking about. It's the dynamic between humans in community doing stuff that's good for them and increasing their well-being while increasing the commons ability to hold them all and the critters that they depend on and all of that. So, so I think that the dynamic you're talking about is completely explicit in there. And maybe I'm talking only about the nouns and not the verbs or you've got me sort of spinning on, on some of those kinds of things. Uh, but thank you. Uh, the comments, yeah, Judy, uh, Judy I, and Scott. I just, I just wonder if, if we aren't closer to doing what we want to do than we think we are, because we have a body of practices, um, we have a sense of fair-mindedness, all of these intrinsic things, and I suspect all of us know other like organizations because we wouldn't participate with them if, at the heart of them, they didn't have some of that going, um, and. I'm thinking in particular that there's a lot of nonprofits that have profit enterprise to fund the nonprofit that operate a lot more like what we're talking about than the traditional capitalistic structure. And they're trying to continue to do their good works of various types, all of which feed the solutions we're trying to see in the world. And perhaps what we could share with them would help them do it faster and get it out to more people. If I can reply to that before passing the, the mic to Scott real quick, because this opens up a bunch of super interesting conversations. One of my amateur beliefs about political economy is that the reason, we, the reason America has so many damn nonprofits is that the for-profits are busy screwing up so many things and trying to minimize government so much that we have a whole bunch of problems outstanding. And that the nonprofit structure means that the leaders of those organizations are spending 75% of their time fundraising, not actually tackling the problem at hand, and that that's a real dysfunction. And that there's a whole bunch of other dysfunctions in this either for-profit or nonprofit model. And part of the reason to create the for-benefit sector, which is this wee little wedge, tiny, tiny little wedge, like. Uh, public benefit corporations, B Corps, there's a couple flavors of it, but so far the number of companies that have jumped into this little middle sector is wee small, 
But the reason for that is to try to get away from the need to profit maximize, you know, share, uh, stakeholder shareholder primacy, uh, or the dysfunctions of uh, the, the whole nonprofit world, of which there are plenty. And I think that we all might have stories on that front. Mm -hmm. And the reason then to create steward ownership, where you have a nonprofit that owns the shares and a for-profit, is to do is to be able to move elegantly between those extremes, depending on the task at hand and the kind of organization always while stewarding the commons and while increasing the well-being of the flows of value in the network. So I think, I think we're trying to tackle all of those things quite explicitly um, in the larger kind of meta model of where this thing is rolling, if that makes sense. Uh, Scott. So this is, um, this is a naive question and sometimes those are the best. Um, so, you have, a, you have a tribe, they're exchanging value in a multivariate way, 100% Pete, lots of different ways to exchange value. I, I'm a huge fan of barter and all that sort of stuff. Then to work with the other village, you, you, I think you, it ultimately gets converted into money and we all hate that, but that's, that's kind of, even within those little groups, it all gets, has to be converted at some point. And so that's the part where, to me and my naive view of this, it all breaks down. Because if you and I are exchanging money, or not money, value all day long, you made my thing better, I made your thing better, that's awesome. Neither one of us has anything to eat because we've, we've made this thing better, but we haven't exchanged it for the value. I can't take that down to the grocery store I can't use that to pay my mortgage. And so how do we take that exchange of value, which is absolutely essential and, and real and turn it into, or, or are they separate? Are they just separate things? And you do your job, see you Lauren, we you do your job. <laughs> I look like you're waving. <laughs> no, I wanted to say something. Okay, all oh, right, cool. so I'm, I'm cool. done. Thanks. Uh, um, how, do, yeah, how do you take your, all this exchange and turn it into something that you, or do you just, I'm sorry, do you have your job where you just work and you find a way to keep things going and then you have this other separate economy, if you will. So Lauren and then Pete and then me. Um, well, if we were doing things that actually like helped us in the real world, which is what I'm trying to get to, then there that wouldn't uh, be a point, um, Scott. So that's where we're, I'm trying to get people to do stuff for each other that will help them getting any kind of employment or money coming in, whatever that looks like to them, um, whatever they want to do or can most easily do. So we just have some kind of revenue coming in. And I think that there's something to do if we're going to have a federation. I think that we need to start experimenting um, with microcurrencies. Um, like Michael Linton said, uh, he had a really great way of having just a board where you can post your currency. And you can have little groups of five who have their own currency. And there can just be like flukes or some nonsensical things. But that makes it much easier for groups to be like, we like that other group, we'll accept their currency because we like them. And then they can just, each group can have a list of currencies that it can accept. And then that builds, a, you can start up with little trust networks that can grow bigger. And then they coagulate into brands that you trust. Like, oh, you know, if they're with that thing, then I, you know, I, I, I will accept that. So it can grow, you know, and the sooner we can start experimenting because it will start with just a, disastrous uh, project, there'll be lots of um, holes in it. But if we can just experimenting, you know, in, among like three groups of five people, um, then that would be great because we'll just like start failing early and um, learn how to actually do it. I don't know. Uh, Pete, and then, uh, then when I'm done, we should probably wrap the call because we'll be at our 90 minutes, go ahead. Pete. Yeah. So it's a good question, Scott, and and Lauren hit a lot of it that that I was going to say. Um, Michael Linton uh, uh, is the kind of the the big thinker in this space. Um, 
so, and Lauren, I, I think said it well, the kind of what you need to do is start federating uh, currency, um, federating money. So money is a reasonable value, value stream too. It doesn't, and then it doesn't always have to be in dollars. It can be in flukes or, you know, credits or whatever. Um, uh, but the more, basically like, um, at, if you zoom out, there's this dollar economy and the, the barter economy or something like that. And, you know, you, you can't see, you can't see a bridge, another place where, you know, it's hard to see a bridge. Uh, if you start dissolving both sides, uh, you end up with a place where, um, you're federating different kinds of currency, um, and, uh, moving exchange for, uh, kinds of value from one, one kind of value network to another kind of value network. Um, another way to think of it is there's the village and the other village who barter, you know, um, uh, barter internally, but don't barter across. It's like, well, actually in, inside each of those villages, there are people who barter with each other and people who don't. But um, if you kind of expand the, expand the federation of bartering, to include both villages, there's going to be value exchange that the villages can do themselves, right? So, I don't know. This is it's it's been a a dream and you know um, uh, longing uh, for a long, long time for lots of people, and it's a hard problem. Um, but it's also uh, just something that we start digging into and and start increasing circles of, of things where you do value and teaching people that um, there's more kinds of value than just down to dollars and and just keep working on it. Go ahead, Scott. You're muted though. Yeah, one one quick question. So is it, I mean, for again, simple me, is that like, okay, so you have, you have cash and you have credit cards. Okay, or and it, this, this, or, or even a gift card. This gift card is only good for this tribe, and you exchange value that way. And the cash, cash goes anywhere. I mean, is that kind of a, a way of kind, kind of, yeah. But then, um, then you might talk to somebody else. Hey, I need something from that tribe, and I only have a gift card for this tribe. And somebody in the middle would say, "Dude, I'll take that gift card and give you a gift card to the other one, and I'll, I'll take ten percent." You know, so. I would love to do appreciation at the end. I want to also throw 10 things on the table for the great question you asked, Scott. <clears throat> um, I grew up partly in Argentina, so I've always cared about Argentina. And they've had a shit show economically. They're always on a roller coaster. It's terrible right now. It was, it, it was bad at the end of when I lived there, all kinds of crap things. <clears throat> and my question, at one point, the question dawned in my head, what did your average Argentine do to deserve having all their country's assets sold out, being in a world of hyperinflation, having all their retirement accounts liquidated? Basically, money got worthless in Argentina. <clears throat> and it was because they were all under fiat currency and because they were tightly coupled to everything else that their relative value dropped. They had nothing left to go on. So a whole bunch of you know, alternative currencies show up in those environments as a buffer, as a safety buffer. <clears throat> and it's a little bit like we have, uh, we have, we've made turned money into a monocrop, and that's a problem more than a than more than a great solution. That the benefit of it is, hey, you can go around the world and you you can take a greenback and buy anything. The danger of it is that when assholes decide to do the global financial crisis in two thousand nine, like what allowed people to sell insurance against CDOs and call them CDSs and allow multiple people to buy insurance against an asset they didn't own and then just lather rinse repeat. That should have been criminal. There should have been people in jail and there weren't. And everybody almost lost a lot of money because of that crap, right? So, so how do you insulate yourself from that? You create local value currencies, which now are hard to use because of, of the conversation we just had. <clears throat> and, the, and, and that's just sort of at the money layer. And then Barter folds in, uh, David Graeber's book, Debt, talks about how um, the myth of economics is that we invented money because barter got ungainly. He says, there is no evidence of that any place on earth anthropologically. Um, money started as, as a, a, a payment for intangibles or incommensurables, he calls it, <clears throat> like a bride price or a slave. Those were where we started using money and then money sort of, and then we end up with uh, the, of the world we have today where money is sort of everything. But then in a world where we're virtual and the pandemic has driven us all into Zoom and into our, and online, who cares about the next village? It might as well be your village. So, so the physical boundaries of exchange have suddenly plummeted. 
<clears throat> and we're busy offering ourselves free videos and, and, and you get into this whole conversation about the exchange of value on social media where they're busy mining your data, which is an exchange of value behind your back happening by people who are trying to manipulate you in your, in your use of money, et cetera. So that's a whole conversation. And um, I'm really interested in how might we live really, really well with no money being exchanged. And weirdly, we may be moving toward a world like that, although the money thing may sort of just happen in the background because all of this may turn into universal basic income legislation in several countries. They're floating it in this country. Andrew Yang ran on that as his platform in the last electoral cycle, did not win, but, but everybody's looking around going, crap, if things are really bad, we may have to give people some minimum level of income so that they have shelter and food. <clears throat> and once you've got shelter and food, then apps have basically dissolved everything else. <clears throat> you want to you wanna have a Lamborghini for the afternoon? I have an app for that. And you don't need to be able to afford or have the credit rating to get a Lamborghini, right? So access to, to the things you would normally have bought with money has now been disintermediated. And you can kind of get through the sharing economy once we get to share again, assuming vaccines and we, we exit the pandemic, that comes back. So all of that is kind of happening at the same time as we're moving into an economy where so many things are available at zero cost. Like I don't pay Google anything for using the Google suites and all the, all, all the other kinds of things. My phone just lit up because it thought I was, um, it's busy transcribing what I'm saying now because <clears throat> I mentioned this name. Um, but, but there's like this zero marginal cost economy that, that Jeremy Rifkin writes about, which is happening in the background as well. So between the disappearance of work and all that, we're, we're gonna see in the next 10 to 20 years, gigantic changes in the economy that will heighten our need for understanding all these other flows of value and living without money necessarily and all of that. So all of these things are kind of happening right now and I think I missed a couple, um, but the idea of fostering and starting to understand these flows of value, which is what Arthur Brock and the Metacurrency team have been doing for 25 years um, is I think really essential. I think this is like super important work for where we're headed. And it did leave like three minutes for appreciations. <clears throat> Real quick, Jay, uh, is I, I wonder if Scott, you read books, maybe you don't, I, I don't anymore. <laughs> I collect books, but I don't read them. You're much. muted, Scott. Um, but, but anyway, I, Jerry, I wonder if that, um, the, the Graeber book is the thing to read about that, or it's, uh, I think or it's pretty approachable. A, or watch a video about it. I mean, the, the thing I do a bunch on the too long reading list is I figure out if, if they gave a Ted talk or whatever, they pretty much had to crystallize the message of their book. Or if somebody's done, there's a tremendous number of historians and other kinds of people online that are doing a series of videos about interesting issues. Very often they've done something on Polanyi or Popper or whatever. And you can just uh, you know absorb that, but but David Graeber's book debt is really worth worth doing the dive. So on. so to to understand why we have money, yeah. Um, and look, don't re don't read Neil Ferguson's book Money. I hate Ferguson. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people trying to figure out what the heck money is, and there's very different stories about money, really different stories about money. And you you know your mileage may vary here. Um, I'm still reading books. I'm, I've still got like six books open at any one time. Go ahead, Scott. This is uh, David Graeber, Debt. Yes, the first 5,000 okay. years. Thank you. Okay, got it. Thanks. Yep. Who just passed away too young. Graeber. Graeber's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I went, to, I went to see him speak once in San Francisco and I was like sitting he behind it. Yeah, he died recently, but the room was so packed that I was sitting behind the column. I had an obstructive view on the floor. <clears throat> the room was packed. Um, okay, shall we pause for a moment? And, and I just, I, before you said that, Lauren, I just wanted to say that I love you guys. That thank you for being here. Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you. And by the way, Pete Kaminsky, Kaminsky spent hours and hours helping me with these appreciation bites. I could never, even, even the, the simple thing we done, it would be so hard for me to do it without him. So he's responsible. Happy to, happy to do it. And so we don't, we don't know exactly what these appreciation bites will do, um, but we think it will lead someplace um, that helpful and get, kind of like getting people into roles and maybe other magical things will happen. And when you say bites, I'm not sure I know what the unit of measure here is, what the thing is. So, <laughs> let's see. Um, did, did you go to the link, Jay? Uh, which link? I put a link in the chat, and so it looks oh, like- Oh, the air, air table. No, I did not. 
<clears throat> yeah, so we're just, um, it's just allowing oh. you to put I, it. I, so Lauren, when you first put this on elsewhere, I went to it and I was not able to put in a person's name like that flunked on me and I didn't have time to go say, hey, this isn't working for me, so I stopped. Oh, I, is, I, yeah, it's okay that Pete had to help me. This is a new improved version, which yes. awesome. might, might work better, might not. Cool. I'm trying to find your link, Lauren. I know I have um, it today, but... So it's, is that, we're doing that live in these other windows, correct? Yes. Uh, yes, and you have to click, you have to re, if you want to do more than one, you have to re-copy and paste it. It's kind of annoying, but that's, you know. So, just, and, and this is, I, so I, I did the tech back end for this. This is Lauren's design and Lauren's experiment. Um, so, so it's it's a little little bit rough, um, but she's got an experiment. She's um, her nose is following a, a scent, and she thinks she's got a, a winner here. And the list of the list of appreciations really is genius. Thank you, Lawrence. It's beautiful. Um, That's my favorite part of the whole thing. <laughs> well, and you know, I wish there was a select all, but I know that's kind of feels kind of <laughs> fake. You know, it's yeah. Anyway. Oh, and we can only uh, do one attribute at a time. I'm sorry, I'm just going through it for the first time. I thought you could select from multiple, like Scott was just saying. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, we we wanted that. It was too complicated. Mm -hmm. So I haven't received them yet. Have you been filling them out? Because you have to choose the meeting for them to show up. I haven't clicked submit yet because I'm still typing. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, so it turns out Vincent looked at it yesterday and uh, he's super helpful too. He was like, there's a way uh, with Airtable, not everyone has to get into Airtable. I can, I can just paste a link to it and then people can just, you know, then review them on their own. Um, but I'm thinking in the circle appreciations, what I want, because I think that there's something to them. I think they are very valuable. Um, I want people to be able to, I want to increase the professionalism and the co contextual information in them so that people can look at their kind of own or other people's um, specific contextual things and then give very much more specific um, uh, appreciations. Like so-and-so is uh, always this way demonstrated by this situation where they did this and I don't know. Yeah. It may be instrumenting this idea too much, but one thing that's really helpful in some settings is having testimonials from other people. <clears throat> and so the gratitude bites are, are small and they're formatted, but even just are you inspired to write a paragraph that this person, that, that this person would have permission to use <clears throat> on their website, on their, you know, on the, in their next proposal, wherever. That could be super, super helpful because then it builds a bank of testimonials for people. Yes, exactly. And I'm trying to um, encourage this behavior for even up for us to do small little things like that, um, for us to like, you know, fill out the stupid testimonials on LinkedIn. Maybe they're not that important, but if you had 30 of them, it would show something and it, it's a uh, taking steps for other people and finding out what other people are doing and um, promoting each other's projects. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Is there a way once we've submitted this particular um, form to go back to do it again instead of yes. just to the, to the blank air table? You have, to, you have to go on the link again. Sorry. I know what I'm saying is, is there a way, does Airtable give you a way in the forms to, to link back to the form at the end? I, we could, yeah. Maybe. I don't know if you get to customize the end. The end you can customize yet. that that end page, and I'll it can cool. have a link. Let's see. Cool. What do you want us to put for the meeting we're in? I guess it's the uh, OG. <clears throat> okay. Got it. <laughs> and then when you're done, I'll I'll run the cards and send you a link. Cool. Or, and there was a blank row on uh, meetings, which made it show up like an error. It said error in the yeah, dropped out. I, I deleted that. Cool. <clears throat> I, I deleted it. I fixed it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, should it, is everyone done? I've only done one, but I, I need to do more, but I'm, <clears throat> I will do it. One, one is a good start. Cool. Yeah, one is cool. Okay, I will share view. So here we go. Thanks so much for humoring me, everyone. Um, how do we add options to the appreciation categories? Uh, you can't, but you can suggest there's a thing to fill out. You can suggest if there's something that you feel is missing, um, you can suggest it. Um, I would. I don't see where to put. Build just, just send Lauren a message. <laughs> okay, but can I say it out loud? Yeah. Uh, builds builds shared assets or whatever like that because I'm I'm trying to offer Pete some some appreciation and he's always building things that we can use <clears throat> so I don't see where that fits in these. Um, I haven't added in because these are really attributes. Um, you can think about that, but that's uh. Really, I mean, this is as 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 important as comes up with brilliant ideas or demonstrates curiosity. Like yeah, make, has, makes make stuff that, that is useful to to the group. So you should take that down as a note, Lauren, and then get back to Jerry with what you thought about it, and and whether or not you put it in. And so okay. that's a feature request. Okay. Or an enhanced. You could request. also put a field at the end that says, "Is there not you know is there an attribute we're missing? Would you, you know feature request?" But then that creates traffic for you incoming for for fielding those. <clears throat> but I don't see in the categories you have how to how to um, appreciate somebody for actual like labor uh, of coding and uh, uh, stuff that we're yeah, using. Like, I, like I, the form. That is something different. This is um, basically collecting attributes um, and not what people are doing. How is that not an attribute? Uh, I guess <laughs> it would be um, uh, like helpful. Like some kind of in the attribute of helpful, yeah. Because um, it's I not mean, what people are. It's like the attributes and not what uh, the work that they have done. Okay. Maybe you should add another another <clears throat> attribute is potential. And if, if you get what you, if you get what you measure, and we want people to contribute more solutions to the pie, <clears throat> don't we want to have that as an attribute? Some like, yeah. I just uh, I I would just phrase it differently. Like, um, yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to phrase it so that it fits inside of the framing you have for what these attributes should be. Right. Right. <clears throat> cool. All right. I will do a few more on my own. Shall we wrap the call now, or do we want to continue this conversation? Um, somebody should share that. Did everybody sure, get to look screen. at the cards or? Yeah, can you share screen on uh, the results? Oh, yeah, sure. I did also send, there's an Airtable uh, link that I just sent, and it has, uh, it's a link to all the cards. Oh, so okay. you, can, you can just so read them. Around. It yeah. starts yeah. off the same, but it's the one. Idea. When you say you sent the link, are you talking oh, about thank the, you. The in the chat? Yeah. There's, yeah, a, there's another link in the chat, the one that starts with yeah. an eight um, instead yeah, I, of I the... opened that and I, I read it. I had it question though about the Thursday after OGM call is that going to continue in the same or a different room or what's the thought there um the Thursday call so <clears throat> the instinct is to bring the regular call the one the one about the uh... lion's bird Oh, Lions, uh, Lionsburg is going to be in a different uh, in a different Zoom. So we're going to switch out. It will, it will definitely not be in the, the other Zoom because otherwise we're going to have people just hang out into the call. Yeah. So we'll, we'll switch Zooms and we'll send that announcement out. And um, Jordan is having a group called OFC do the facilitation. So that's going to sort of be, be there. So. so you'll get it out to us. Yes. yes. Perfect. I just want to get it on the calendar so I don't screw up. Cool. Thank you. I think Perfect. it's a fascinating area to explore. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you. I will go uh, do more and read more. Bye. Thank you. Bye for Have now. Good day, everybody. Yeah, exactly. Be careful out there. Take care. Bye.
we're the hangers, the last to leave, huh, Scott? <laughs> I can't do what we did last time. I can't um, either. <laughs> but have a good day. <laughs> yeah, you as well. Um, I've, I've just a quick update. I've made, I've, I've continued to make progress. I found a 30 year old who appeared from my past. Uh, he was a, he was someone I coached in hockey and he found me and said, I found you, you know, and he was super excited about it. So we connected and apparently I had a huge influence on him that I had no idea. That's none. Surprising. And I, that's cool. Yeah. And, and so Positive affirmations are just jewels, aren't they? Oh yeah. Yeah. And so he's, he's an incredibly thoughtful, well, I, I say kid, he's 30 years old. Um, but anyway, we, we've just, we've connected because we kind of think we enjoy the, we enjoy these kinds of conversations, right? And anyway, so I've been showing him my, my program, my model, because he's far enough away from me that I'm not, it, there's no pressure, mm -hmm. you know, and we're aligned enough that he's interested in it and he's, He's just encouraging. So I've been able to make progress on it, which I think is, is really great. And I'm excited about this idea of there's this universal structure of thoughts, placeholders, projects, um, games and stories, you know, basically thinking, saving, making, playing, and you know, living or meaning, something like that. And then you build your own deck using the card, the other cards. Mm -hmm. And and I have them organized, but that doesn't limit you from I think that's a great improvement. Moving around. And I so, thought you're making really good progress. So I'm happy for you. I, I'm I'm excited about it. Um so I, I'm looking forward to sharing that with you and your daughter. Okay. So, that yeah. would be great. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.